Test, test. Uh, thank you. All right. So, uh, so to uh, go ahead and get things started, we'll call Representative Stovall forward to present House Bill 38, the substitute, which is in the folders LC289260S. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Let's sit down. Oh, there's a new chair right here. Okay. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. I bring before you House Bill 38, um, LC 289260S. And um, this particular bill um, is a bill to um, curb um, uh, the issue we've been having across the state when it comes to theft by shoplifting. And the changes. Um, to the bill that was made from the original bill um, starts at line um, 43 and um, that and it's really to uh, what's been happening um, across the state is when it comes down to those individuals who've been convicted um, of shoplifting they've been able to kind of curve through the the law uh, where they may be at three different separate separate stores retail establishments um, during a certain amount of time and then they're able to use a no low contendery um, plea and not um, have to um, be not have to serve um, their full um, sentence that they need to be able to serve so what this bill does is it um, cuts through that fine line I guess in the in the law um, that makes sure that upon conviction of a fourth of subsequent offense for shoplifting um, where there have been prior c evictions, the either felonies or misdemeanors, that any combination of the felonies and misdemeanors, um, as defined in this code section, um, when they commit a felony, shall be punished by imprisonment, um, which is, I'm on line 45 through 49. Thank you. I, I'm familiar with this for, for what I call recidivist treatment. I think that's what it is after several previous convictions an enhanced sentence is available or even felony treatment is available um, at a certain point and if a no contest plea has been utilized previously that might not be available for consideration by the court and so it wouldn't be count counted for recidivist treatment um, and so that was my understanding from sitting through subcommittee on the need for this bill um, I am curious, uh, Mr. Scandalakis or Mr. Smith or, or Ms. Travis, if uh, willing to offer a, an opinion on this, if case law requires that there also be proof of representation at the previous, uh, any of the previous convictions. Mr. Scandalakis, could you address that? Mr. Chairman, I will tell you that that is, we do check to make sure the person's been advised of his rights and has he, has he or she been represented. So we always want to make sure that they have adequate representation um, when you count that. So even with the, um, sorry to just put these questions out to you here, but so even if the no contest was utilized in one of the these previous cases, uh, if the defendant was unrepresented in the previous case, that could not be used in order to receive, in order to reach recidivist status. Is that true? Right. What? Right. What? And, and case that's what. And that's why I looked at Mr. Morgan and Ms. Travis is because that's. I, I do know my practice as DA was to look at that and make sure they were represented, and knowingly waive their rights. Yes, sir. Um, and that's one of the things we did consider. That. That's my understanding of of the law in that, that area and um and i appreciate this discussion because i think it's helpful for the committee members to understand the um the representation that must have occurred with the previous uh previous offense so mr bode is that your yes, yes. yes sir mr chair i i just want to in chair or uh representative stovall may be able to help me out i think the, the policy uh i guess posture for this bill is that we want an individual to be able to take no low contende when the prosecution prosecutors often that in a felony case and that not be precluded because i know i've had cases in my 
uh, law practice where a prosecutor said that I'm not going to give you a no low on a theft by shoplifting because of what we just talked about, uh, the repeat offender concerns. So I guess this may be the rationale behind that so we could give an individual, actually I have cases like that right now. So I think this is possibly a good posture if that's what we're trying to do. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah thank you. That's a good point. All right, any other questions, discussion about the bill? All right, at this time I'll accept a motion. Motion do pass. Second. All right, there's a motion do pass and a second on LC289260S. Any discussion, any amendments or debate? All right, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, it passes on to all rules. Right, thank thank you. you very much. Um, what we could do is um, uh, I can, I would ask at this time if it's appropriate to ask our vice chairman to give us kind of a summary of House Bill 43 and how we got to where we are here today. We have a substitute that we expect is going to arrive, and when he c concludes his comments, if there are no questions, then we may suspend to see if the, um, if the bill is arriving. So uh, I'll recognize Vice Chairman Reeves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we heard this bill yesterday, and as has been stated several times, we, we've been debating this concept for the last several years and um and there were some and as this session has gone on we have gone through the bill again this is one of those issues like many of the issues that come before this committee if i can quote our, our prior chairman golick we have to thread the needle on this and and get it done um right and that's a very difficult task and over the weekend some work was done to simplify what had really turned into a very complicated piece of legislation, uh, but we weren't able to have it yesterday morning in LC form, and we also were discussing in the committee the potential need um, or, or lack of need for maybe at least one of the definitions, and so in light of the fact of where we are in the session and trying to move this along, because this bill deals with a very, very important loophole that currently exists in Georgia law, and that's that um, folks that are, that are associated with a school but not in an employee capacity, for example, a community coach or something to that effect, can have um, sexual relationships with students, and there is a loophole where they are not able to be prosecuted under certain circumstances and this bill has always sought from the very beginning to close that loophole. Um, this is an important piece of legislation. And so what we did yesterday is something that, frankly, I've never done in my three years um, as, as vice chair and subcommittee chair. And that was because we didn't have the LC in front of us, we went ahead and just moved. I moved the, the concept and the bill forward to full committee today without recommendation um, because we were unable to, to have an official LC to look at. And I believe that my understanding is we're waiting on that right now, and hopefully we'll have it. Um, as far as what we discussed yesterday, we we left our discussions, I think, with a, a consensus of the of pleasure with the substance of the of the bill and how it had simplified and changed, um, but with a question about whether or not the the term actor needs to be defined, and. Um, and I think that that was something that we intended to discuss today. I think that there's a, 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 a case that it may not need to be defined in the definitions. And Ms. Travis, um, do you recall, was there anything else we discussed yesterday other than the term actor as far as what we were going to look at today? Ms. Travis, if you would just move up to – actually, if you would come center here if you're willing, uh, I can turn the – And turn your microphone on and um, hear your testimony. Thank you. Sure, Jill Travis. Here, and um, I, I do know I, Actor was one of the uh, issues that came to my attention on immediately looking at this. Um, I know there was some discussion about school and pre kindergarten that Representative Dickerson was interested in. It was, frankly, it's just, I, I will say I applaud the committee's attempt to make this simpler. And um, 
uh, what's the word to, to streamline the it's the actions that take place in these various settings and it should be the same for the employee and the agent whether it's in a hospital or a school or a psychotherapy setting or a probation office and I did do, do applaud the efforts to make that simpler it's just that um, without um, without seeing it it's difficult I, and I will you know, as I review it again today I, I, and looked at it last night, I, I do know that um, consent of the victim may be an issue with regard to the age limits and all and how that plays out. But without seeing it in the LC form, I, I don't know that for sure. Well, thank you for that summary. I know that the objective in the rewrite here is to be to have it a classification type offense because of the parties involved and um, that based upon the nature of the parties interacting with each other that would form the elements for the offense and I understand that the LC is being copied right now um, if uh, if I uh, if it'd be acceptable to the committee, maybe we can, we'll hold, we'll table this for just a moment while it's being copied. And there's actually something else that I'm in killing some time here, something else that maybe I can cover with you all. Yesterday, there was a, the Park case, uh, an opinion from the Supreme Court of Georgia that indicated that sex offender conditions for a lifetime um, are unconstitutional under the federal constitution and assuming that the u.s supreme court does not overrule the supreme court of georgia then we may look to justice blackwell's concurring opinion in the park case about potential legislative action that's needed this session or in a future session the boiled down and I won't be able to say this as eloquently as legislative counsel but boiled down the bottom line is if there are certain sex offenses where supervision is required consistent with what the sex offender conditions previously allowed or or was being done then that will need to be reflected in the form of probation for life and we have in Georgia law probation for life for certain sex offenses already but not maybe for some others for instance in the park case one of the offenses for which the defendant was convicted was child molestation and child molestation does not by law provide for probation for life and so in order to allow for electric electronic monitoring for all of the defendant's life even after well for all of the defendant's life that would have to be a sentence authorized by law so these are very important considerations. We, of course, received this opinion the Monday of crossover week, and so we're very late in the process. Also important to note, in Justice Blackwell's concurring opinion, it's made very clear that this is only prospective. It would not be with respect to any existing sentences that are in place. And my understanding is it would only apply to criminal offenses that would occur after the General Assembly passed or after such a sentence authorization was enacted. In any event, I wanted the committee members to know about this opinion. If you have some time to review um, the opinion, you may choose to do so, because it is possible one of our members is going to be working on legislation, possibly even this year, to uh, work under the guidance provided in the concurring opinion. Um, Mr. Scandalakis, do you have any comments about uh, the case that you wish to provide? No, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think you covered it well, and that's okay. exactly right. All right. All right. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I would like to say this, and uh, not to step on anyone's toes, but um, I would like for us to look at this bill later 
give it us some time to really look at it in the LC form because it didn't come to us in the LC form. And like the uh, gentle lady said, uh, it's very confusing. Uh, I know that we spent a lot of time on it. I don't want to do anything to disrespect the author and his um, <coughs> efforts to make this a good bill. But I, I just have a, I mean, I personally would not like to vote on this and take the time <coughs> up right now. Well, I appreciate the comment. And maybe if it would be all right, uh, we can at least have some discussion over the draft that's before us. And then we can discuss what our posture is going forward. But as with all of our issues, we don't want to act in a rushed manner as we review important legislation. And, uh, and so I'm very sensitive to those comments. Okay, um, and I think that do you want Ms. Travis to come back here? Sure. Ms. Travis, if you could, um, why don't you have a seat up here as well so we can, do you have a copy of the LC yet? Do we have an extra copy of the LC? Yeah, hmm? Yeah, we're not we're not voting on this today. This is just a hearing. Okay. Why don't you walk through the changes that were the that got us together? All right. So what I what I'll what I'd ask to do is as we're all just looking at this together, we'll just go through L C two eight nine three zero nine ERS. And uh certainly along the way if there are any questions or input, then we'll just uh, hit your button, please. So we'll begin with the definitions that are provided. You'll notice that the actor definition includes the knowingly engaging in sexual contact. This addresses something that I asked initially when we first reviewed this bill. That is, maybe a student initiates the sexual contact or the sexual behavior, and simply because of the class of the teacher, the teacher would be available to criminal charge. That was a concern. And so this requires that the actor knowingly engage in and participate. Agent is something that Representative Setzler uses very frequently in used in the substitute that he was considering. And uh, Representative Sains, I know for uh, you have another committee meeting too because we're not taking a vote today. Um, you know, you're welcome, you're excused if, if you need to go. Um, but agent is, as well as employee, is defined in here so that that would provide some clear definitions of the class of individuals. And we're moving away from the authority determination that uh, has been subject to judicial review previously and has uh, caused problems for the statute. All right, so uh, you'll also notice that psychotherapy was previously defined and that's because in the statute there was also I believe it was subsection C was for psychologists and counselors and then D what was D I believe was for what I've termed sensitive care facilities so these are um, uh, home care facilities or elder care facilities things like that and so they have been rolled into the operative language that we'll get to here in B. So B, you, you will see there is a first degree and a second degree. The first degree is the sexually explicit conduct that mirrors Representative Setzler's proposal. That is actual intercourse, things along those lines. Second degree is inappropriate touching, is really what, what I would call it. And you will see that then, as far as the relationships, each are provided in sublet one through, I believe, seven below. So the operative language in B, a person commits the offense of improper sexual contact by employer or agent in the first degree when such actor engages in sexually explicit conduct with another person whom the actor knows or reasonably should have known is contemporaneously. So it's at the same time. And then you see one, this is the uh, student teacher, enrolled as a student at a school in which the actor is an employer agent. Okay, so again, we have the knowingly from the actor participating, committing the offense of 
of sexual contact by employer or agent is, order, is in order to avoid juror confusion. The previous statute was titled sexual assault, and the concern was that if it's in a quote-unquote consensual framework or the, the ages of the parties are such that they could otherwise consent, that might cause juror confusion. And so that's why the statute has been renamed. And, um, and then an element of contemporaneously, so at the same time, in, these, in this capacity or in this relationship. Okay. Um, two is the probation, parole. I added accountability courts. I'm familiar with accountability court framework where maybe there's a diversion type program in place or pretrial diversion supervision of the officer court in which the actor is an employer agent. All right, three is circumstances in custody. Four is a hospital patient. Five is um, a prison or jail person in custody, inmate in custody. Six is what was previously C, as I mentioned, which is, and you can see it here, C is crossed out, which is the psychotherapy treatment setting. And seven is the sensitive care facility, which I defined previously in the definitions. C outlines second degree, but it's the same operative language below. All right, so D the, um, is restating existing law that consent is not a defense, and I think we've cleared up any confusion that might have been there. E is that defense that if the parties are married to each other, which was in Representative Setzler's bill. F follows very closely the sentence guidelines that was in Representative Setzler's proposal. That is the first degree is 1 to 25, and as you can see, is existing law. The um, sex offender conditions are also in place here. And then an exception in two, if, the, if it's a child under 16. And then sublet two is if the defendant and the victim are within a certain age range, certain provisions as we find in other parts of the law. For second degree, you can see the, it is a high and aggravated nature which follows Representative Setzler's proposal from his legislation as a, and is a policy decision for this committee to consider. All right, with the exception of a child under 16 or if the defendant and the victim are within a uh, certain age range of each other. And then from there, it just updates the statute until you get to page six, which is it provides for the new reference of, and this is 11, so lines 209, improper sexual contact by employer agent in the first or second degree unless the punishment imposed was not subject to the um, I believe that's the sex offender conditions, 1710, 6.2, I believe. In any event, subject to the more serious um, related offense, and then updates from there. And that also tracks Representative Setzler's recommendations from subcommittee. So certainly open to any comment or questions about this. Um, are there any members who have any questions or want to discuss this? Representative Reese. My, my question would be, Ms. Travis, after seeing this in this forum, and I know that we're doing this in real time here, but do you, um, does this clarify or change your thoughts on the necessity of the definition of the word actor? And from listening to the chairman's explanation, I think there was actually a um, my, I came to understand, I think, for the first time that the purpose of defining the word actor was to – can you please – Yes, again? yeah, it's real simple. Under the previous draft of the bill, if a student exposed himself or herself to a teacher, the teacher committed the offense. 
just by the nature of the teacher being in that class and the student being aroused by by that it it would be a it would be a commission of the offense and so a knowingly element is required and that is included by defining actor in such a way okay so what, do you have any thoughts kind of spilling over from yesterday on this discussion i do okay. and i certainly appreciate the chairman's addition of the word knowingly and i think it's a critical element but the problem uh, that i wrote that i brought up yesterday still exists um, and let me walk you through specifically why it exists if i can turn your attention to page two at lines 48 to 52 and um, most all of you have known me long enough to know how I use definitions and that is to put in the words so that the sentence would be how it should actually be read so looking at line 48 a person commits the offense of improper sexual contact by employer agent in the first degree when a person knowingly engaging in any contact involving the intimate parts of either purpose person for the purpose of sexual gratification of either person engages in sexually explicit conduct with another person to whom the actor knowingly engaging in the the difficulty in I think that the actor definition works for the second degree but in the first degree you've conflated the issue of um, sexually explicit conduct which is what you're trying to say the actors engaging in under that on uh, under subsection B versus the subsection C where it actually is just this limited sexual contact um, I, I, I think that the solution could be to uh, perhaps repeat the word knowingly um, before the word engages and take out uh, the definition of actor because if you re reread this again so if we said on line 48 a person commits the offense of improper sexual contact by an employee or agent in the first degree when such person knowingly engages in sexually explicit contact with another person whom the actor knows or reasonably should have known who the per with mm, sorry I messed that up sexually explicit conduct with another person whom the whom such person knows or reasonably should have known is contemporaneously enrolled as a student at the school in which such person is an actor or agent and just because if we just kept repeating such person in those situations it, especially in the first degree and I think that it would work in the second degree too if you just changed it to such person and make sure that you add the caveat of knowingly it it makes it less convoluted in my in my mind um, that, that I think that makes sense the um, we're really talking about drafting preferences effectively because we're we're talking about the same thing just stated differently but I don't think at least I sitting here don't have any issue with what you're outlining I think what we might ask is legislative council to just review it because we're not voting on it here and now to review it and see if legislative council is comfortable that we have in as simple as possible a way outline the criminal the elements of this these criminal offenses if I may just sure. two, two other and again I'm you know reading this at the same time you're you're stating it uh, I did mention earlier the issue of consent as I read this bill now I don't have that I don't share that concern anymore so I wanted to let you know I, I would uh, point out at line 28 the definition of employee it just seems a little weird to me that they're working in order to earn wages or salary I, I don't know it, it, that, that's on line 28 employee means a person working in order to earn wages I mean why do they have to work in order to I mean they they're paid a salary they're paid wages they're an employee so just so I understand your comment you're saying the in order to right is but but you're saying you don't have an issue with it with employee being defined it's just the way it's defined here correct okay and I'm sure there's other places in the code it's defined it just strikes me as odd language okay what else that's all I could see in the 
few minutes I've sure. had to review. Um, I, I do. Um, oh, I, I did have actually one other thing. I wish Thomas Weaver was here. Um, because he would, um, and I, if I look at the, is he here? No. No, it's too early. Um, the, the way that Senate or House Bill 43 was filed originally, when you brought forward the new registration information, we clarified it so that it truly was um, only felony offenses. I know specifically that line 220, the obscene telephone contact language, in Representative Setzler's bill was cleaned up to reflect accurately current law. Um, and I've got that in my folder. But I, so in terms of other one, one or two other comments, if we could, if you could in your section four of the bill, um, I know that the language on lines 209 through 211 are going to be your new language, right? That's because you've, you've you've titled this crime as a new offense that's going to be the same but there's I there's something in my mind in lines 212 through 220 that i know we make changes to reflect current law and i can tell you that specifically as you hear from the other i see you're speakers. saying that it's we're, we failed to include or accu accurately reflect existing law as to these other <laughs> it, well, classified I wouldn't, offenses i wouldn't call it existing law it would so for example your first offense of seen telephone contact is just a misdemeanor and it's a not a registrable offense. If you look at this plainly, it's sort of hard to tell that. So, um, and I say Mr. Weaver, but he's the one that brought it to the committee's attention mm -hmm. and then I incorporated that working with him last year. So uh, there might have been a, a, a couple others. I know obscene telephone contact was one. If I could just look at that bill. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, so uh, Scandalakis. Mr. Chairman, um, we would like the committee to consider uh, second and subsequent misdemeanor offenses to be felonies uh, to prevent employees or an actor from going from school to school committing, you know, misdemeanor after misdemeanor that doesn't rise to the level of a felony. So we'd like you to consider that. All right, as far as how the bill is laid out, the structure of the bill and the new criminal code, do you have any objections or comments? No, sir. Okay. Um, just working on the language with Ms. Travis and, and Legislative Council and addressing some issues that she's already brought up. Uh, we'll be glad to work with the committee. Mr. Scandalakis or Ms. Travis, do you see any issue with us working on this to iron out any questions or concerns in the next day so that a bill could be considered potentially tomorrow on committee day? Don't see any issue? No yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, very good. Does anybody have any comments or questions about House Bill 43? All right, what I'm going to, I'm going to ask our committee attorney to make some extra copies available in my office in room 131. And so any members of the public which uh, who want to grab a copy those will be available today so that uh, so that you'll have that this morning they'll be available all right I'm sorry uh, Representative Kendrick oh just a, a clarifying point I'm reading lines 29 through 30 is the purpose of this bill so say for example um, because we're so specific in divine, defining intimate parts if someone um, were to give uh, um, an inappropriate hug, this would not be in included in it. But if it was offensive enough, it would be covered in under some other assault statute. Is that what we're trying to, we're trying to specific tar specifically target parts as opposed to maybe the intent of the person giving the offensive behavior? So, so a hug under this, under this argument or question, I would look to lines 91 to 94 as far as second degree Mm -hmm. and the actor would have to engage in sexual contact. Okay. And so sexual contact means any contact involving the intimate parts of either person for the purpose of sexual gratification of either person. So if the hug or the contact is for the purpose of sexual gratification, and it involves the uh, body parts that are referenced here, then it potentially could be. If it's 
not for the purpose of sexual gratification, which is a question of fact, then uh, then it wouldn't be. Does anybody, uh, does that sound correct? That's a good question, yeah. And if it were if it were an unwanted hug, then you could also look at simple battery yeah. or something of that yeah. nature. All right, Representative McLaurin. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, because I'm not that familiar with sentencing for this area of law in general, I'm just curious. Question for anybody: um, Do these mandatory minimum sentences track? Uh, onto similar crimes, just not in the employee agent context. Let me answer that. I think did, did they track the is it the child molestation? Yes, sir. Area of that's right. And and is there a some sort of enhancement reflected here because of the nature of the power relationship? Or I'm just trying to situate it in the constellation of sentencing. So for my own understanding, is there an enhancement part? Well, I guess, would these sentences reflect identical conduct outside of this? Because it sounds like the goal is to, to patch the hole here and make sure that there's not some sort of a loophole. So I'm wondering if the sentencing is the same for comparable conduct, not in this context, or if it's slightly enhanced because of the context. I'm just Slightly trying to enhanced. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know about how much? Just like, for example, I see 25 to 50 for the, the most serious. Do you know what the comparable conduct would be? We will pull it up. Child molestation is five to twenty. Okay. Or second subsequent is is up to life. Life. Okay. I That's all. Yeah. I would just comment that what we're talking about is sexually explicit contact with a child under sixteen. For that one. For yeah. that right. sentence, right. which would generally be, uh, which could be aggravated child molestation, which would carry a mandatory minimum twenty five years, I believe. Now it is greater than a statutory rape charge so just so i'm clear right. depending on the conduct that is involved that would dictate whether it's inconsistent or not okay great that that helps thanks all right very good any other comments or discussion all right so let me uh let me just recap scheduling i i know that we have quite a bit on the calendar for today in chamber we are going to maintain our committees scheduled for one o'clock subcommittee scheduled for one o'clock and two o'clock today however if uh, we are still in session this afternoon then you can expect that we will have subcommittees tomorrow at one o'clock and two o'clock followed by full committee at three tomorrow and so for everybody here you can just expect tomorrow afternoon we will have meetings to certainly take up House Bill 43 at that time, as well as I expect House Bill 551 and, um, and other measures which I plan to include on the agenda when released. All right. Any questions right now? All right. Thank you very much. We're adjourned.